Hi, my name is Bob Grinier and I'm a volunteer with the Martin Fleischmann Memorial Project. Today I have to say thank you to Sho who helped organise the uh, trip to Japan to uh, observe the uh, Dr. Amaza transmuter vibration system and the Amaza gas um, because he uh, sent me this original uh, Matsumoto uh, book and uh, the ISBN you can just see under the label here is ISBN 4-906255-15-9 and this is a um, book of the uh, Japanese text of the original um, uh, papers that were published in Fusion Technology before they changed the rules uh, not making it impossible for him to effectively publish in Fusion Technology um, and at the time uh, that this was published, uh, Matsumoto hadn't got to the conclusion that it was multiple nuclei and that it was effectively uh, along the lines of EVOs and so forth. Um, that was something that came uh, around about 2000, 2001. Uh, however, um, at this time he was calling it uh, gravity decay of quad neutrons and uh, it has these papers in here. And the reason I'm very happy to get this uh, is that uh, it's always good to have the original text uh, but the paper that I was uh, most interested in this um, uh, was uh, uh, because of what we've seen in recent days was because of this image that I shared and um, there's a number of uh, ring and spot structures on here so we've got a ring and a spot ring and spot and so forth um, and there's just just the ring structure here, and this for me was the big win. And uh, this is in the area a little bit outside the material that appeared to have disappeared in the uh, testing we did on the 10 yen coin. And the area I'm referring to is, um, if I can get my finger in there, uh, just over here outside, the, there's the hole, and over on this edge. Um, most of the interesting sort of defined structures uh, on the Amaza samples uh, appear to be outside the area of main sort of uh, change or destruction or burn through or whatever and I guess that may be where the uh, EVOs uh, if that's what they are are not clustering uh, too much in order to do too much damage uh, so anyway uh, the reason this one piqued my interest particularly uh, not just this one, but this one, um, is uh, the circle nature. And if you look in the book here, um, uh, you can see there's a range of uh, micrographs that he has. And it really looks a lot like this one. So what I did is I, I put the microscope, uh, changed the, the straight uh, arm on that to the angled arm so I could get it a, a more um, perpendicular uh, shot and... Uh, to see how round it actually is and, and to investigate that. And so uh, there's, I have this shot and I will share these images. There will be links in the video, but also uh, you'll be able to download the uncompressed files. And here we have our ring uh, and uh, we have a range of other structures um, that are quite interesting. And uh, I really want to delve in a little bit into this paper, which is available uh, online in English, actually. This is the uh, Japanese version, but in, in English. And uh, it's called Observation of Gravity Decays of Multiple Neutron Nuclei uh, During Cold Fusion. Now, um, like I say, he changed his mind later on, but this was published in 1991 and of course he says that on the front of this book he actually first observed these structures on August the 25th 1990 um, and uh, he was uh, the, in the department of nuclear engineering Sapporo uh, and uh, at Hokkaido University and in celebration last night I had uh, a Hokkaido pumpkin uh, roasted for my dinner. Uh, anyway, that's an aside. Um, silly aside. Um, anyway, so if you look through this, uh, you can see these structures that he's referring to. And, you know, when they get really, really close, uh, they, they can appear as uh, what you might call a, a ring and a spot, uh, like so. Um, but this, this little beauty is the one that I um, am keen to point out first. And if we go to, so I've, got, I've taken a couple of extra shots. And this one's quite nice because it shows a substructure here, which is quite linear in this 
particular structure. You can see the uh, overall sort of hexagonal shape on here, and um, pentagonal here, hexagonal here. It's a bit clearer on the other one. Um, but these these particular structures, like this one and like this one, um, they have dimples. Uh, you can see them very clearly here, dimples. Uh, dimples and uh, or pits um, on them. And let's go to the other one. Now, I want to show you why I find these really interesting. Okay, so here's a, a shot where it's, it's, it's as much as you can imagine being straight on. And uh, I just draw your attention to several different structures we've got here. Um, so this one essentially looks like a ring. But it isn't really quite a ring, and I'll, I'll come back to that. But here, here we have a one, two, three, four, five, six structure with the, the width. This one here is uh, different, but again, it's got its band at one, two, three, four, five, six. And they're slightly curved, and then there's the band with the bit in the, in the middle. Um, this one's a bit off shape, one, two, three, four, five, six, is it? Uh, maybe this one's one two three four five uh, this one is very very clearly hexagonal uh, one two three four five six and uh, we have a similar one over here of the same type one two three four five is that six five uh, I don't know uh, this one although it's like spherical and we've seen it from another angle uh, it does seem to have some substructure and when you when you reflect on this um, I'm, just, I'm gonna hold off on that, but the, up here we've got a quad one two three four and there are other uh, Four-sided structures again. You have this band on the outside um, But this one actually if you really really look at it, it isn't quite a perfect circle You've got a pimple here a pimple here directly opposite each other. So that's one two then you kind of have a three four five, six, seven, eight. It gets softer and more like a, a ring, but it, it isn't quite a ring. Um, so if you can imagine, I'm, I'm adding another two points here, it gets softer when, when you've only got four, it's kind of really quite like a, uh, uh, you know, a square. Um, uh, you know, hexagon, it's still quite hexagon-like. Um, but the interesting thing is, it, it, like if these are crystal structures, why have we got all these different things going on and they're like 100% there and 100% there and, and and why is this like 100% like this and it's a different orientation to this one and and so I don't know I'm I'm really really looking forward to doing the uh, analysis of this under the SEM and EDX um, and I think this area is going to be uh, one of the key areas but what I'm going to do now is I'm, I'm going to zoom in because uh, we've actually got this at quite a high resolution. And what I want to bring up is a couple of overlays uh, from this paper by Matsumoto. So uh, this is the first one I'm going to bring up as an overlay. Uh, and there it is. And I didn't scale or anything. I just dropped it over. So are we seeing something similar? Um, I mean, this does look pretty much like a perfect ring, but is it? Now, in other work by Matsumoto, he uh, pointed to these structures where, at, at, at points, they had lines coming out of them. Uh, let me see if I can find that for you. Here we go, uh, and I think this is almost eight. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, this is a seven-sided one, but again, this one is quite like the uh, ring structure. Um, but maybe it's just presenting itself different on the material or the x-ray or whatever it is that's uh, uh, showing it. But I am really interested. Matsumoto said that uh, you can expect carbon to come out of these. So is this carbon rich around here something, something that we shouldn't expect uh, because we only had copper uh, with a very small amount of uh, uh, tin and uh, zinc because it's uh, actually a bronze. Uh, the 10 yen coin um, and the gas has supposedly only got oxygen and, and hydrogen in it so if there's carbon in this specific place how did it get there how did it get in this very specific place um, I don't know um, or are there other elements uh, going on what is this in in the gap in in between so that's that one but then uh, later on in that paper um, there are other structures which also rang a bell, and these were within his cold fusion experiments, and, and here it is. 
and there's there's whole lines of them. And now, uh, Shoulders described these uh, bead chains. So this looks like it's on a chain, and then there's these beads, but the beads have a substructure within them. And if you look at this one, uh, it's it's one, two, three, four, five, six. This is like a substructure with uh, uh, an overall structure with a substructure to it. Let's go back to our image. So over here, could this explain this very specific structure with dimples? Let's bring up what we've just seen and overlay it here. Is that something similar? Now, <laughs> I didn't even orient this. It's just the way it is. Uh, um, but it, you know, he's got two different ways of looking at it here. But you can see that there are dimples or pits. Is this basically showing a superstructure which is comprised of a collection of smaller evos? Is that what we are seeing over here? Is that if I zoom up here? Is that what we are seeing? Where is it? Where is it gone? Uh, uh, there's, there's another one up here with a slightly different texture to it. Now, um, it also here we have this kind of line which looks like a, you know, it's white here and then it goes like to crystals that are here with gaps and then more crystals and then it kind of like peters down. Let's turn off the uh, uh, Matsumoto images and you can see over here is like soft as well. Now there are similar kind of structures that also Matsumoto observed but are these really um, crystallization? Uh, maybe, I don't know. Uh, it, it did go through some sort of phase change. Um, is this something that's coming in or it's bleeding out? Is that like uh, the kind of thing that Matsumoto is observing here where these sort of beams are coming out? Because, you know, the kind of is something coming out this way and the sign of some kind of something coming that way. Anyway, I think that this is going to be the richest pickings part of uh, the coin uh, for uh, understanding potentially if Evos are involved and if they are, uh, what they are able to do to matter. So we've got something that looks like a ring, which actually may be eight points. Uh, we've got a spherical object in there. Uh, uh, we've got a square object. We've got a hexagonal, a hexagonal. Um, we have another hexagonal, another hexagonal here. And, um, uh, you know, some have like a dimple in them and so forth, pentagonal here. So, uh, you know, uh, I'm really going to be, um, I, I just, you know, I feel really, really lucky right now uh, to have an opportunity to look at this. And uh, let's see when we come to analyze it, if it really uh, delivers on its potential promise here. So uh, just a quick look again. So what I'm saying is that is this observed by Matsumoto similar to what we are seeing here? And is this, which is two different ways of looking at, uh, observed by Matsumoto, something similar to what we are seeing here? Thank you for your time and I will see you in the next video.